So I think we'll let okay. Um, my name is Maxim. I'm the co-founder of Adiax, and I'm working with the. Th uh, I'm kind of CTO of Adiax, more or less. Um, so thank you for coming here. Today we're going to talk about um, what I would call enterprise business app with Drupal. Um, usually you probably know using Drupal for CMS, content management, websites, but actually what we do, we don't do websites almost at no more. So what we do at Adyx today is more or less e-commerce, enterprise apps, and site factories. So that's why I'm going to talk about the, the middle one because it's actually half of the business. Uh, and um, it's, not all, it's not natural to, using, to think about Drupal when you think about some kind of critical enterprise business app because usually when you talk to the IT responsible guys, they will tell you Java, .NET, Symfony, if they are open source. Um, maybe they will talk about Node.js, something like that. And, but actually Drupal is quite a good platform, we'll see why. Uh, so, first of all, what, what I call enterprise apps, because there's like a lot of definition of it. So from, from my point, if, if interrupt me if I'm wrong, but the idea is everything, any, any digital asset that will try to optimize the usage of resources of an enterprise, like, like optimizing salesperson or optimizing <laughs> stocks or optimizing anything, uh, or even it's for providing better service, like for, um, for your clients or for your, for your providers, vendors, partners, whatever, so anything that will, will optimize the overall service your company is doing, or to enhance like better sales, sell more, um, I don't know, whatever. Um, and usually what we see today is like, is because of the globalization, everybody is, 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 every big enterprise, their core business, it's quite optimized. Like if, you, if you're building cars, you're BMW or, or Porsche, they're, they're doing very well in cars. So to gain um, new clients over very hard competition, they need like providing something more. And this something more is your digital transformation, if you prefer, but there is, is something that will optimize the overall customer journey. So it may be very, there, there are very wide array of apps that you can create, maybe digital asset management systems, maybe reporting, logistics, polls, planification, order management, CRM or whatever. Um, so, and the idea is probably to, um, to get rid of your jobs within the company, so replace them all by robots and automation. But before that, uh, let's see what's, how different a web project is from an app project. So if you, take, uh, if you take a web project, it's usually something that is piloted by the CMO, chief marketing officer, CDOs, communication officer, something like is without evident ROE. When you're building a new website, you cannot say like, building a new website will make you like 30% growth of your sales. No, you can never say that. Usually it's done by agencies like design agency, LBI, Digitas, Publicis, whatever. And the keywords you have in there, that's content management, e-commerce, social walls, careers, HR, press release, you all know that. If you've built websites, you all have this feature problem. When you see on the app project, it's more an IT project or CDO project. And here the ROE is important and easy to calculate. If you, for example, reduce the time spent on contracts and you have thousands of contracts to manage per year, you can reduce your headcount by half. It's, it's immediate ROE, right? And then if you go in deep into details, you will more talk about workflow, internal apps integration, content data synchronization, um, active directory, single sign-on, etc. And with quite complex business rules and a lot of reportings, forms, capture of data. So how usually it happens? So the client usually, what happens is almost every single app project. Oh, we noticed that 50% of, this is from real clients, right? So it's a sales manager in a large um, agricultural group in France. They provide 75% of oil, not, uh, not oil, but the, the oil you, you put in your food, right? Uh, worldwide, so it's quite, they six billion of revenues. 
and they noticed that 50% of their time they spent on contracts representing 7% of their revenue. So there are big clients, like for millions of years of uh, contracts, and then you have small clients buying for like thousands, but they spend half of the time because it's, it's the same uh, time you spent on the contract. So they, they ask for the IT guys, like, like, look, you could optimize everything. And um, the IT, the CIO says, okay, Oracle is robust, X is there, auto-generated forms, we can do it, no problem. And then they build a project, it costs them half a million, and, and actually when you come back and, and, and ask the guys, so how are you doing? But we don't use Oracle as nobody understands how it works, so we continue using Excel. This is a, you should have. And when you see why Oracle is a so beautiful product, you see why, because it looks like that. And again, this is actual captures, not from 90s. So what we notice is that there are a lot of new needs within enterprise apps inside the companies. We, they need to be user-centric. So guys are all using iPhones and Androids. Well, most of them are using iPhones. And so UX and UI are quite important. They want something that works. Um, and more and more services, everybody talks about UX on the f f client facing side, Uber, whatever, all apps are shiny, works all the time, never inside, right? So they want also agile project because, um, because more and more application, if you are uh, using and stick to the UX uh, approach, you need to work with the end users. And end users are not able to validate 800 page requirements documents. So that means that you need to have an, not the waterfall approach, but more an agile approach with short iteration and user feedback. And ob obviously you need to be mobile because the enterprise app cannot be used only on your laptop within your company, but you can, can be used on your iPhone, on your, um, on your Android at home. Well, it's not very good, but you should. So, sorry, so why Drupal? So, so, so it's, well, you all know Drupal, so, so you will see slides and you know how it works, it's not a surprise, but this is actually what I use to sell Drupal within enterprise, this and my clients, to sell them against everything else. So it's quite hard and it's usually addressed through the IT services, so you can reuse those ideas or whatever. So first of all, you say Drupal uses Symfony. We all know that only part of it, but it's, it, it installs something like, okay, Drupal is something on top of Symfony. I know Symfony, so it's countdown. It's, it's, not a, it's not a big, huge system. Well, it is, but again, it's using Symfony. So it's, 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 you have thousands of models. That's kind of important to say that because he will immediately see the re um, reusability and, and not reinvent the wheel things. And you can see that uh, many different, that the same Drupal can run many different kind of websites. Then um, you have to explain that the, the difference between the classical framework, as you can see in WordPress, Magento, whatever, take framework, they all have their API, core API, and then a lot of models around. Drupal have this wonderful system of small, low-level models that can connect to each other. So you can end up building something like, seems complicated on the paper, like you have a web services API going to dig and capture data from Apache Solar or from Views or from um, um, Amazon S3 or, or Sparkle. So if you write down this, it, it may be quite complicated, but actually it's very easy to build up with a little bit glue, some models. You can go fast building this kind of stuff. Of course, you have to talk about structured content because CMS, they think HTML pages, actually Drupal don't deal with HTML pages, don't deal with entities and fields. So this is very important to explain that you manage content, not pages. Forget about pages. Then you have to talk about data migration because every single enterprise app will synchronize data from and send data somewhere. So you need to be able to deal with millions of lines of data quite quickly. So this is there you can talk about Migrate API and how you can connect it to the PIM, ERPs, CRM, whatever. But this is just like everybody else. You take Symfony, you take Java, .NET, they all do that, right? When it starts to be interesting is how you can actually manage the layout of your app. Because if you build your app in terms of design and UX with an atomic approach, you know this idea of widgets uh, inserted into blocks, blocks inserted into 
bigger blocks synthesized into templates. So this idea of reusable widgets or reusable forms or whatever, it's important because then you can say using penalizer, paragraph, widget engine, or, or there are a lot of new initiatives doing uh, um, layout management. You can actually rearrange your apps and you rearrange your screens based on the user feedback. And then you can achieve something like, like a drag and drop stuff of widgets. And um, well, just an example here for, um, it's, a, it's a press release factory. So the idea is like Moet Hennessy, you probably drink Moet Hennessy one day in your life. It's Rina Krug, uh, Hennessy, uh, Moet, et cetera. And they, they have, a, we've built for them a small press release factory. So you actually have something like, um, something like that. You can, you, you already seen this with penalizer stuff. So you can edit items, you can scroll. But if you, if you show them this the demo, like, look, this is a structured content. This is a file actually attached to an entity. But you can change the name without even um, knowing all the complexity workflows and revision system behind. It works. So this is something very impressive for the end users. So make sure that you have key users in the room when you're presenting this, because they want that. And Oracle will not do that. Then if they talk about business process management, because there's a lot of workflows and a lot of things to do, you have, we have rules, but rules is, 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 is a very good thing to create a complete business process management system. You can work out with a lot of, a lot of code and a lot of events, but you can build powerful things when you can define property events and triggers. So it's, it's, it's a good tool. Same, all enterprise apps, it's about building dashboards at some point, reporting how many contracts, how many users, how many whatever stocks with um, views bulk operation, you can go and create your, your dashboard, custom dashboard, very easy. And finally, um, with Drupal distribution, because apps never are never alone. So once you build your interconnection with the PIM, with the ERP, with the CRM, with the DAM, with whatever other application they have inside, those modules have, can be reused with other apps. So each time you build a new app, you can reuse using distributions. So you can create a real ecosystem and try to start to eating all the other technologies that are in, inside. So to show you the, the, the thing is that uh, on our support, I have some discretion, discretion to, so on our support uh, ticketing system, we get a, a blocker tickets saying uh, that the guy say that actually there is a screaming dinosaur running around his, each time he connects to, the, um, to his back office. We was like in the support, like, like it's a joke, he's drunk, it was 2 a.m. in the morning. No problem, we'll see it in the morning. We actually, he updated the ticket in the morning, and it's a big company, a uh, French company, and actually he's, he finally captured the dinosaur. <laughs> and, and we was like, how it's possible? We was digging into the code all the time, all the time, and actually there is a model for that, it's Konami code, you can, and somebody installs, so if you put your code, you can actually in the back of his head, your dinosaur. So, well, this is a good example. So, okay, this is why Drupal is good. So now how we do that? So how we concretely can create this enterprise application? Well, this is easy. You have to, to mix the users because without them you will build shit and try to avoid the IT guys as much as possible, but they are here too because without them you cannot interconnect, you cannot deploy, you cannot manage the... Um, high availability, etc., and the visual design, the, the beautiful thing. If you build up an app that looks like Drupal back office, it will be exactly the same shit as Oracle. So try to create something beautiful. I will show you some examples then. And the most important stays, the users are the most important thing. So if you work with users, not the, with the bosses, you will create beautiful thing. And try to resist because we had Every time um, the, the, the guys who has the client says, oh, I know my users, I work with them 15 years, I know exactly what they need for. No, say, no, get out of the room, I want your users here. Because every time they, they, they change the, the small details, the small wording things that makes the app feeling and working better. And know your enemy. And your enemy isn't, uh, isn't actually Oracle, SAP, um, uh, Salesforce, a symphony or whatever. Your real enemy is this, email, Word, SharePoint, WeTransfer, PowerPoint, Excel. Because this is used all the time in replacement of enterprise apps. 
So if you are providing something like, I don't know, marketing plan system to create new products, they are using Excel probably. Um, if you try to optimize the presence of vendors based on their languages and air traffic, they are using Excel. If you create a digital asset management sharing system, they are using WeTransfer. And those are very efficiently, uh, they, those are very efficient systems that work and everybody knows them. And you have to be better than them. It's complicated. Everybody knows Excel, everybody knows WeTransfer, and you have to be better and add, add value. So the idea is to define a complete user journeys that usually start offline and end up with um, offline too. So I, I get an order, I get a phone call, I get a mail, I get whatever, and then what happens? And try to optimize all the screens, all the stages. Then, um, obviously, you have to work with desktop and mobile and try to go very deeply in terms of um, wireframing and initial stages of definition. You this is examples, a real example of a business application we built for Sephora. So here you have wireframes. It's not actual design. So you can see that the actual wireframes are quite precise. Everything is it's almost designed, but it's still wireframes. Why are you doing that? Because when you work with users with complex business rules, with, it's, it's easy to understand a website based on the wireframes. But if your wireframes are not precise enough, an enterprise app is way in, impossible to understand. So you have to go deep into details. And you can build your, your pages and every interaction, and your prototype has to be interactive. You let the users play with them and observe them, uh, check the time they, they take to, 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 to interact with your app, try to see how they interact. So, well, and then you have to build code, whatever, and you build up your, uh, your theming, whatever. It's not, it's not important. So I give you some examples of what you actually can achieve. So the first one is, imagine you have a um, retail network of thousands of boutiques all around the world, and you have a 5,000 employees company, and you want to manage those boutiques. Actually, today, before the Enterprise app was created, they were using email. And this is inefficient because uh, the guys in the boutiques are working, are selling stuff to the clients. They don't check emails all the time. You don't know if they actually check the email. So there was a lot of uh, problems. So we built an app, actually working in a, like a progressive web app, working on iPads and iPhones to manage everything like merchandising plan, um, leave, sick leaves, uh, KPIs uh, from the business uh, intelligence news, uh, tools links, furniture ordering, everything that happens out of the cash, of the cash desk, right? So you have the cash desk, payments, and everything else is managed through the app. So it's an app installed on iPads and iPhone on every single employee working within the company. They reduced the email usage by 97% implementing this. So it's a tremendous um, gain in terms of productivity, in terms of um, um, the, um, image also, because there was a lot of problems with partners. So this is an example of most internet things. You have AD, SS, single sign, etc. And the design, well, it's okay, it's quite good. Another example is uh, the same thing, but you have a little bit uh, more complicated because it's duty-free boutiques all around the airport. So if you go to, um, you probably met one of these brands, it's all the same group. So if you go to Paris, it will be by Paris. It may be either duty-free, whatever, you probably met them. So it's 500 boutiques in 220 airports across four continents, 31 countries, and they were using actually XWiki. So they already had some internet style. The idea, well, there was a competition between CGI and Sitecore versus us and Drupal. Obviously, we won. Um, so this is example. Again, so this is a uh, Gmail-like app front-end with offline mode support and things to do. You can actually see what have to be done. You can say that I actually performed the, the thing. You can attach images. For example, they ask you, can you install um, your perfumes in front of uh, uh, the entrance. Yes, I, did you actually do it? Yes, yes, look, I took the picture and I attached it. You have a complete notification center. Um, you should have. So you get notification, obviously, what happens 
uh, it's exactly like in uh, every apps, and you have also uh, statuses for each store, so you have an overview of all stores and what happens on all stores, so on the headquarters level you can see an overview of everything that happens, and you can see also the some KPIs, yeah, so you have, ah, no, so this is, this is the usage of offline mode support, because in, in, inside the airports there is almost, well, the Wi-Fi is not good, so you have to be able to continue working with the app within the, the um, connection law. So you, classical HTML5 app cache, indexed DB, if you want I will send you the codes, well, not, not very useful slide, but anyway. And finally, the most important one, Cognac, because I will, everybody loves Cognac, right? So this is a number one company of Cognac in the world, 50% of the market. You have to know that you cannot produce Cognac out of Cognac, so, well. So they have a problem if you, if the, everybody sells Cognac. There are no, no problem with sales. You sell 100% of your production. The problem comes with how to get Cognac because you cannot create Cognac in Champagne, you cannot create Cognac in, um, in Germany or in England. So you have to deal with wine yards because you, can, you have to buy wine and Cognac and then sell it. So they work with about 2,000 of uh, wine yards. Oh, sorry, it's in French. Oh, sorry. Woo! Meh. Okay. Uh, so you will have French lessons for free. Uh, uh, so, yeah. So what actually they do? Contracts, uh, engagement, samplings, payments, uh, invoices, every, all the relationship between the wine yards and this company is now digitalized. And this is extremely important for them because the wine yards are quite uh, grumpy guys. They don't have problem with selling their cognac. So if you fuck up, for example, with a bug and you gave a, a, um, a B note for an A cognac, they have A, B, C, D. Their difference is about 200 thousands of euros for the wine yard. He will say nothing. He will say, okay, fuck off, I will go to the competition. And then you lose money because actually without cognac you cannot sell it. So we build an application to manage, and the, and the business rules are extremely complex because they have their own language, you don't understand, even for even Britain and French. They have a very complex usage, you, you have courtiers, you have guys who are buying, who are distilling, everybody, it's a complex ecosystem, right? So we built something very simple. We have Drupal managing all the complex stuff. We have Angular GS front end, because we want this app to go fast and we want to, to say in conferences that we use AngularJS because it's so fancy. So, and we have some uh, data, data platform, API, and some ERP, for SAP actually for, for, the, um, for the contracts, right? So actually it looks like you can, you can manage contracts, you, have C, you, you see the sampling st stages, so you, you actually print, um, um, a small badge you put on the bottle, you scan the bottle with a barcode, you deposit your bottle, it tasted with a 50 guys testing it like, okay, and then they give you a note and you get the money. So, but this is on the paper, but actually you have engagement of three years of different parcels of surface of alcohol, how, how much is the quality, which one, it's very complex. And you can also go through um, creating your, uh, your samplings and you can even organize the, the distribution with the, with the trucks because you cannot put infinite amount of alcohol within a truck, right? So everything is managed now with Drupal, with a quite nice design, despite the complexity of this app. So you can see all the contracts filtering. You see actually classical Drupal stuff. You see views bulk operation, you see views, um, you see a content type, uh, you see not add, create echantillon, actually create a sample, you can create with just an entity. You have fields, nothing very complicated from a Drupal point of view. And here again, you can organize your tours of distribution and you can drag and drop your deliveries within trucks and then say which date it will be delivered. So this, they actually already tried to build it with Symfony and they spend around a million and a half and three years with a big company and we redid it for a half a million and within a year. So it's 
three times faster. Maybe the provider was bad, I don't know, but it's not about Symfony. It's just because we reuse components from Drupal and it enables us to grow faster. Final, another example, it's a transactional e-learning platform. So if you are a company selling, I don't know, cognac, the e-learning is not really important because, okay, except very fancy bottles from Louis, Louis XIII, which is about 2,000 years, the cognac is what, 50 years bottle. So the e-learning is not important. But if you are selling jewelry for 2 million euros, the selling part and the train and learning of your salesperson is quite important because, well, 2 millions is 2 millions, <laughs> right? So this is an example of, again, a Drupal designed um, app. So it's beautiful. I don't know, well, you can recognize who is it. So it's for managing uh, the e-learning system. So train the salesperson from your to uh, actually um, um, uh, learn how to sell, right? So news about brands, what I like, events, important events, and obviously learning part. I think it will stop, yeah. So you can go training, uh, okay, you have statistics, you have quite beautiful design, again, front end, all apps, and maybe you will get some, so you can filter by counties, it's just taxonomies. It looks like, wow, the fact that it's just taxonomies, views again, post, it's just a classical entity create. Okay, you created a post. Man, but looks how it's different when you are putting UX and design on top of Drupal, it looks shiny, okay? So then you have your courses, training products, so you can go and you can start the program about the training, right? Um, sorry, I have another one video, it wasn't. Oh, so you have search engine, sorry, yeah, search engine. So you, you get quite good French courses. Uh, so yes, again, autocomplete solar, nothing exceptional, just beautiful design. Again, it shines. But the good thing is we started doing this and we actually th was thinking, saying to the, to, the, to the IT guys, look, we have now iPads installed with an application used daily by most of your staff. Why not adding another thing? And so actually we implemented inside things, the CRM uh, and the digital install from others we, we already demonstrated. So we, now we have a quite big application with e-learning, CRM, and all this managing stores. So this is how we grow from just like, look, try Drupal, and after you eat everything. And you remove uh, your uh, .NET, Java, everything. So this is how you do business, okay? So if you have questions, don't hesitate and ask me, uh, and then whatever. I finished quite quickly. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, the, the idea was to make it interactive. That's why I finished earlier. <laughs> Not because I lack of slides and I finished them this morning, but okay. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Uh, I will point them with laser. Right? Oh, be. Well, this is, uh, um, there, is a, uh, there is a method for that. So the idea is, um, first you start with key, um, key bosses without users to define the, the overall ch shape of your backlog product. So feature matrix, what we use is what we call feature matrix. We actually put the feature down and we add there the value for business, the value for each persona. So you have to create first who has, uh, create the personas, who, are, who will be actually virtually using this app. And then based on the personas, you select the key users. And what we used to do is to take one user from each persona, one very um, fun guy, active, looking for change, digital native, and one like conservative Donald Trump stuff, like. So we mix them together because you have to get this dichotomy to get the, the right and the backlog. So you, you take the guys who want to change and the one who doesn't want to change. So you mix them together and you end up with quite good average product. So, so, so how many it depends on number of person. It may be three, it may be five, it may be 10, but usually you cannot run up UX workshops with more than five, six people, it's not possible. So the UX workshop is 
five to six person maximum. Otherwise, you have to split. And then the focus group and the user testing, then you can open it to ma many people. We did, uh, for example, user testing for the Cognac portal with about 200 people. So it depends of, 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 of the, your business, etc. cetera. Uh, other question? Mm -hmm. No? Ah, yeah. Uh, what are you doing to get the data into the Angular app? Uh, REST UI? Yeah, yeah, uh, it's, it's REST. Well, actually, we, the, the Drupal 8 has some basic support of REST API, so we use that. And then you build up your, uh, your, your custom, custom methods. Uh, the, the good thing is to, what we actually started at Dior is to saying like, if you have a lot of API thing, some of them may be used only for the app, like filters or everything that layout related, but there are other like get client by ID, search client by whatever, or other app that may be used by other app too. So then we add up some API management level if they all don't already have it, like APG, MuleSoft, or whatever. And then you connect also those API to offer them to other application that might use it. So yes, it's basically a REST API standard, yeah. Yeah. Um, so in terms of, um, you had some handlers, yeah. Drupal with, or decoupled with yeah. Angular. Was that all the way through, or did you let Drupal have more control in certain places over layouts yeah, How but do you let people control that if you take it away from them? Yeah, well, the idea is to say um, full, full headless, full, so the, there is no HTML served by, uh, by, by, by Drupal at all. But the idea is to say that you can still rearrange layout blocks. The only thing is that you assign your, it's, it's just data, so you assign your blocks and your entity, your, your IDs with blocks, you are assigned with them some IDs, and then on the Angular side, if you, the, the order of blocks or the placement of the block in the regions can be replicated on the templating engine of Angular. It's a little, it's add a little bit of headache, but obviously you can, you can deal with that. Actually what we do, to be honest, is to sell them the ability of layout, drag and drop, and then say, you don't really need it because it isn't, it isn't in the backlog, right? So no, nobody asked for it, so, so forget about it. So this is something like more like, okay, you can do that, but you don't really want it. <laughs> you know, we all do that, so come on. Other questions? Yep. Well, so, so thank you, sorry for being so quick. So, so. I'm on vitamins, so. Oh.